strength is going to limit our, our end results, so we're going to check our endpoints there. What do you do now? You're trying to maximize, right? You know maxima and minima have to occur here, here, or somewhere in the... Somewhere in there, right? It's got to be in there. But the places where it occur are the places where the slope is going to be zero, right? How do you find the slope? Take a derivative. When all else fails, take a derivative. You going to take a derivative of this product rule? No, you're not going to do that. Why don't you distribute it out, see what you get, take a derivative, set it equal to zero. That's volume. I don't know if I did that right. Did I do that right? Did I mess it up? Uh, I did it right? Oh, sweet. Seriously? Good, because I was guessing. I was totally guessing. No, I'm just kidding. I knew it. Um, anyway, so you distribute it. You combine everything together. Hopefully, you got that far. Did you get that far? Now take your first derivative. Make sure I'm right, by the way. I like being right. That's awesome. Sorry, that's v of x. So v prime of x is that. Yes, no? Okay, that's nasty. What do you do with that? Set equals zero and pray you can factor out 12. Right? Set equal to zero because that's going to give you the only places where you have a critical point. Critical point is the only places you have a relative max, relative min. So set this thing equal to zero. Does 12 factor out of it? What do you do? Try six. Try six. Did six factor out of it? No, you can do four. Do you do four? You can't do six? Darn it. I hate that. You can do four? So four factors out of it. You can still factor out the four though, right? If you don't want to do quadratic formula, that suck. Uh... How much is that divided by four? Forty-six. Hundred twenty. Well, you can try to factor it or use quadratic formula. Do you remember the quadratic formula? Yeah. Right. X equals <coughs> minus one. Oh, we should watch Matt Seaman. Right? We've been singing about it. Minus B plus X equals B minus B plus or minus, minus radical B squared minus four AC all divided by two. Hey, get it?
Are you working it out? Mm -hmm. Have you already worked it out? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. Those too big for me to do in my head. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm gonna. Uh, two thousand. Twenty-three percent. Two thousand. Total? Oh, no. I just wrap. No, I need This is twenty-one sixteen. Twenty-one sixteen. Total? No, no, 676. 676. 676. Oh, damn it. 676. Six, that's easy. Yeah. Six, six. What's six, the square root of 676? 126. 126? 126. 126 would be Very good. Okay, let's see. You get what? 23 plus or minus 13 over 3. 23 and plus or minus 13. You divide everything by uh, 1 half. That's where I did it. 72 over 6 and 20 over 6. 12 and 10 thirds is what you're telling me? Yes, no? Yeah. I feel okay with 12 and 10 thirds. It took way too long. <laughs> OMG. BFF. TGI Fridays. Um, tell me something about these, these points. Why can't it be 12? We can't make it X big as 12. So this one, even though it says 12, you cannot do that. The only one it could possibly be is 10 thirds. So let's think about this. Now. Realistically, we already said, and you can check it, you can check your endpoints. In fact, I'll, I'll erase this, I'll do it over here. Your endpoints are 0, 8, and the only critical number you had was 10 thirds. If you make 0 as your x cut, you're going to get a volume of 0. If you make 8 as your x cut, you're going to get a volume of 0. Are you with me still so far? Look at your volume function. It says if you make, let's see, you make a cut of 0, 0 times anything is 0. You make a cut of 8, 16 minus 8 uh, times 2 is, is 0. That's times 0. So you're going to get a volume of 0. The only one that could possibly work is 10 thirds. So what you would do, I'm not going to spend the time to do this, but you find out whatever, has anyone done that, the volume for that 10 thirds? If you do, what you do is you plug in your 10 thirds, you find your volume, whatever this is, is your maximum. So the maximum volume would be plug in 10 thirds to your original volume function, figure out what it is. I'm not going to have you do that right now, do it on your own time. <coughs> figure out what that volume is, and that will be your maximum volume. It occurs at a cut of Three and a third inches. You follow me on that? Three and a third inches. How do we feel okay with our maximization so far? You ready to try something a little bit more fun? Because when are you ever going to do this in real life? Well, maybe. Box. Box. Yeah, I, I'm not a box cutter. But I do build oil pipelines in the middle of the ocean, so let's do an example like that, okay? <laughs> Wait, really? No. I wish. Well, that's, a, that's a summer job. Seriously, though, any questions mm -hmm. before I erase it? Do you understand the idea? You understand how to draw a picture, come up with a formula that relates that picture to what you're trying to maximize or minimize. Do your derivative. It's all about the derivative. Set it equal to zero, solve it, come up with your constraint, and check your endpoints. That's absolute max min. That's exactly what we've done before in, what, three point, I don't know what it was. Well, we've already done that. You said you plug in your endpoints, you plug in any critical numbers you had, whichever the biggest one, max. Smallest one, min. No problem. That's the idea. <clears throat> 726. How much? 726. 726? Anybody else get the same answer? Uh, I did. 726. <coughs> this would be in cubic inches.
You guys ever go to Santa Barbara? Ever? You ever see those oil pipelines out there? <clears throat> Sometimes they have pipe, let's say you want to build one of those, but you wanted to not have tankers go back and forth. So what you're going to do is build that thing and then build an under the water pipeline to land because you have a refinery right off the coast somewhere. So here's what happened. Your refinery is here at point B. The oil leak you located is there. Oil. If you were to go directly from the oil to shore, we'll call that point A. Here's the idea. Here's what you know about the, the situation. Pipe costs a whole much, whole bunch more to put it in the ocean than it does on land. You gotta have people go out there, lay it right, go under the water, put the pipe together, do all this stuff, okay? Now we're gonna make this kind of simplified. It probably doesn't cost a, a dollar per kilometer, but we're gonna say it costs a dollar. Maybe it's like a, a million dollars per kilometer, or a billion, I don't know how much it is. But let's say that it costs twice as much for the underwater stuff as it does for the on land stuff. You with me on that? So the pipe costs one dollar per kilometer in the ocean. <coughs> and half of that on the land. So whatever it is, you can substitute it in different numbers, and you get this right, same exact idea, okay? On land. If we want to minimize the cost, which I hope that you do, right? You want to build the worst pipeline. For, if you want to build the worst pipeline, you go like this. Uh, let's put the oil way over here, and then down here, and then over here. That'd be stupid, right? We want to come with the most cost-effective way to do this pipeline. So if we want to minimize our cost, what would you do? Would you go like this? Would you make your oil pipeline here and there? Would you do that? No. I don't know. It seems to me like that would be the least amount of ocean pipeline, but the most possible land pipeline, wouldn't it? I don't know if that's going to be cost effective. I have no idea. Uh, I really don't know. Would you go straight from the oil to the oil stop? You could. That would be the, the, the fastest way, right? The least amount of pipe in general, but this is the most expensive pipe you can lay, right? This would be less expensive. So chances are, we're gonna to come to some point